Bonjour à tous et à toutes. Euh, en tant que directrice de la bibliothèque de l'EPFL, je vous souhaite la bienvenue. Euh, je dois dire qu'on ne vous attendait pas forcément aussi nombreux quand on a lancé l'initiative. Bref, là, on se sent un peu sous pression. Donc, on, on compte sur votre, euh, je dirais, euh, intérêt, euh, ouverture d'esprit, compréhension euh, interprofessionnelle euh, pour euh, cet après-midi qui nous est venu, enfin, l'initiative nous est venue euh, de manière, je dirais, assez... Spontané. C'est vrai que vous savez peut-être, pour certains d'entre vous, que la bibliothèque de l'EPFL, chaque année, s'est efforcée depuis plus de six ans d'organiser euh, au moins une fois par an une manifestation, une conférence euh, un tant soit peu importante, s'adressant aux chercheurs et aux professionnels de l'information et touchant à un des aspects « open science ». On a parlé des Creative Commons, on a parlé de l'open access, on a parlé open data, etc. Cette année, pour différentes raisons, euh, nous avons changé notre fusil d'épaule, quelque peu. Euh, une des raisons est qu'il y a déjà un certain nombre de manifestations importantes euh, autour de l'open science. Vous savez par exemple que dans deux semaines et demie, euh, sur le campus de nos voisins euh, de l'Université de Lausanne, il va y avoir une conférence open access. Et euh, nous, on s'est dit, bon, on fait quand même pas mal sur l'open science. Et pour tout dire, ça nous occupe beaucoup. Euh, et à tel point qu'on avait envie euh, de partager à la fois nos, nos expériences, euh, nos difficultés, nos succès comme nos échecs, et euh, de pouvoir faire, euh, je dirais, de l'open science en bibliothèque, pour, la bibli pour les bibliothèques, à savoir mettre à disposition un certain nombre de nos données professionnelles, de ce qu'on fait, et euh, espérer qu'elles pourraient être réutilisées, qu'elles auraient un intérêt pour être réutilisées ailleurs, et inversement aussi euh, de susciter une montée de données, une ouverture de données de, de votre part, euh, pour que nous, on puisse en, en apprendre quelque chose et qu'on puisse donc partager euh, des acquis euh, sur ce chemin qui est quand même devenu euh, euh, je dirais le chemin, euh, celui de l'open science euh, pour euh, un grand nombre de nos institutions et donc euh, pour les bibliothèques dans leur qualité d'accompagnement, euh, d'accompagnant aux chercheurs euh, sur ce chemin pour faire de l'open science. Je dirais aussi que pour les PFL, et ça me permet d'introduire tout de suite notre première intervenante, pour les PFL, la problématique Open Science est quelque chose qui est high priority. Notre présidence, Martin Vetterli, a clairement défini la mise en œuvre de, des bonnes pratiques Open Science comme une de ses priorités et a créé notamment le Open Science Strategic Committee et je remercie donc beaucoup Catherine Bayer, professeure associée à l'EPFL et présidente de ce Open Science Strategic Committee, de nous faire l'introduction pour cette euh, demi-journée professionnelle et de planter le décor à l'EPFL et un peu au-delà. Merci beaucoup Catherine. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. It's really a great pleasure to welcome you here on behalf of the Open Science Strategic Committee of EPFL for this event on uh, open science and what it means for academic libraries. As you all know, we, we and that is really sort of the academic community, have been communicating our results for the last 300 years, basically via printed media, and only in the last 30 years we have really started to use the World Wide Web. And more recently, really, with the capacities of the World Wide Web, with, this, um, with the speed of it, we can now really go beyond sharing just publications, but we can also share many other of our research artifacts that there are. Like, for example, data, certainly one of the most important ones, but also software, hardware, the, I mean, the sort of how you, you produce it, basically, and teaching material, and any, many more things that you can imagine. And just on a side note, I just want to mention, you might know it, I mean, the World Wide Web was invented just uh, 50 uh, kilometers from here at the CERN. And really, the, the seed idea of the World Wide Web was really to share research knowledge openly. Right? So it was uh, Tim Berners-Lee who, um, who invented it. And uh, 
it was really the with the philosophy that much academic information should be freely available to anyone and should be shared within an international dispersed team. And today, this is really what we want to what we want to use the World Wide Web for when we talk about open science. Um, so. More specifically, so why are we here at EPFL really interested in it? And I guess it uh, really applies to, to any other institution as well. It's really, of course, because we pro what if, uh, Open Science promises to us is really to have a larger impact, maybe better quality research output, um, and which is then used more widely worldwide. And of course, also to provide fair opportunity to those who um, um, to, to, to who want to reuse our results. As someone who also educates, of course, uh, sort of the next generation of researchers, so uh, educates uh, PhD students and postdocs, it's also very important to me to see that what maybe today is still not yet um, very widely lived, I'm very much convinced that it will be the future. So when our when our PhD students and postdocs are hired as um, faculty members elsewhere, they might be measured up to the standard to which degree they have really already open, implemented open science in their research. So I think it's, for us it's really important to, to trans, um, um, transfer this knowledge and to make sure that we really prepare our researchers, not just scientifically, but also in the way they, uh, they share it, uh, their research. Um, how it was done, um, um, Isabel Katz uh, already said that, I mean, uh, here at EPFL we are uh, lucky to have a president who is really very much behind open science and where it's really top priority that, um, that we um, improve basically the way we, we live it. Um, and he put in, uh, together that open science strategic committee, which already reflects how we perceive um, open science or at EPFL. And, the key thing is, I think, that it's really not just up to the researchers, it's not just up to the library to uh, implement it, but it's really up to all of us. And I think it's really crucial that all of us work together on this issue. So in that committee, we have representatives from all faculties, but also from the central services like the library and um, the presidency and the Swiss Data Science Center. And uh, so in the first year, we have among many other things, we reflected on what is really sort of the most important things to achieve. And as I just mentioned, I think the key, one key point is really that we empower our PhD and postdoc students to implement open science in their research. So it means we have to educate them, we have to provide them with the tools and skills needed to do that. Um, and we don't want to implement open science on the campus as something new. We really want to sort of change or um, the attitude of all of us and then really implement it in all the different branches that already exist, as I said, in the faculty and the central services and uh, the direction. So, and because the, that brings also the knowledge that we can really draw from the expertise that is already there. Um, but of course, we also have to provide all the infrastructure, software, services, gu uh, guidelines that are necessary to implement open science. So if you look at it here, how, how we can really achieve it, um, I mean, it's important to notice that there are many of us are already doing it to some extent. Uh, and the question is now really how can we make it really something very common and re achieve this uh, cultural change throughout. And I think the key thing is really to provide yeah, the infrastructure that is needed, that is sort of the, the necessity to make it possible. We should make it easy for anyone who sort of newly adopts it. Um, so you should really try to, to lower the threshold as much as possible. We can influence our communities by, to make it normative. And then, of course, we can also go top down. And um, I think here at EPFL, at the moment, we have the policy that we try to do that um, only in a very, um, how you say, uh, sensible manner. So not, to, not too, too hard, basically. And only imply, basically, uh, apply policies where, it's really, where we can be sure that it's really equally uh, applicable to everybody. Because one thing that we also realized in our discussions is that there are really issues that are discipline specific. I and mean, for example, certain concerns with regard to open science, they, they vary really very much between disciplines. And I think it's important that we keep that in mind, in particular when we implement some policies. So I think the more constructive way also to go about and that we bought, uh, decided to do here at EPFL is to, to make it rewarding, to provide incentives for such open science. And uh, one thing that we, 
are now putting forward is an open science fund, which uh, we, have, we got from the direction 1 million a year. And with those, um, with those funds, we want to support projects that really develop uh, open science beyond what is currently already uh, there and uh, really help us help them to spread the research results and to make these more robust, accessible and reusable. And the call is just open and the deadline is uh, December 14th. For any one of you who is really from EPFL, there's an information session tomorrow at, um, um, in the research, from the research office. With that, I hope I gave you a small sort of overview on what open science means for us here at EPFL. And uh, I really wish you a very pleasant um, afternoon with lots of discussions and uh, exchanges. I think yeah, open science is not yet something which is established. So to really find new ways to do it better, to, to push it forward, it's important to discuss, to exchange views before we can really establish new norms. With that, I thank you for your attention and wish you a great afternoon. Thank you very much.